Well, ladies and gentlemen, this is a bit of a different video. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, is your host with the most, Avery R32 here. And I want you to not just destroy, but I want you to obliterate the ever living boo boo stain off that like and subscribe button. So we can climb even higher, the almost 1500 ladder, almost at 1480 subscribers. I can taste that 1500 ladder, ladies and gentlemen. Um, first of all, thank you all so much for all the love and support. I always do appreciate it. Hope you're having a fantastic day or evening because I'm recording this at almost 11 o'clock at night. I'm exhausted. I got off of work uh, not too long ago. My horrible part-time job. Sometimes it's great. Sometimes it blows cheeks. That's what she said. <laughs> but I want to talk about this really interesting deck that I came across. So a little bit of backstory before you all start hating on this list. Hear me out first. Um, I will explain everything. If you remember back at the NAWCQ, we saw a round eight feature match where a guy was playing a 60 card Fiendsmith Millennium Exodia deck. And I ended up going through basically frame by frame reading his round two feature match because they didn't record it. It was just written coverage. Um, and I read all that. I looked through frame by frame on his actual video feature match in round eight to see what cards he was playing. And this is his build with some changes. I actually was able to find him on uh, Facebook, ended up reaching out to him, told him who I was, said, hey man, I would love your list. He ended up giving me his list, told me what changes he would make. Like he was playing Super Poly. He said he would take out Super Poly and put in different stuff. Like as you can see, I'm only playing 14 cards in the extra deck currently because I just don't know like what 15th card to put in, right? Like it could just be like anything else. Um, but these are just like ideas that I'm messing around with. The side deck is all his. Um, but once I saw his list when he sent it to me, it really got me to thinking that maybe we could put together some cheesiness of the cheese with this deck. Um, so without any further ado, this is 60 card Fiendsmith Exodia. I'm sure some people are going to cringe and roll their eyes and say, really, Avery, are you playing Fiendsmith with this crap? Uh, look, the Fiendsmith cards are busted AF. I'm not going to put it in a bottle and breastfeed it to you, as another YouTuber would say. Um, shout out to uh, Quantum TV, because, you know, apparently, like, he can rate TVs when he actually can't, but um, I'm going to stay in my lane. <laughs> but anyway, I'm going to shut up and uh, just go through this. You got the five pieces of Exodia. It's an Exodia deck. I don't need to go over it. Um, three Lava Golem. Um, so the guy who... I talked to, for those of you who don't know his name, his name is Dakota, really cool dude, um, Dakota said that he would swap out the lavas for maybe like Nibiru's, I actually kind of disagree with that, because Nibiru as a top deck in a deck like this is absolutely cheeks, um, whereas Lava Golem, whether you open with it or draw into it's not terrible, and it eliminates two bodies on the board, which is not bad, and then you can also side deck into sphere modes if you know that you're going second instead of lavas, because what deck isn't going to put out three or more bodies, at least in the current Toxic format we're in. Then we're playing three Sangajin, um, two of the Golem with three of the Shield. That's pretty standard. Um, three, I uh, almost called it Tractus, three Engraver with the one Lurry. He was only on one Tract. Um, I'm playing two. I feel that that's just really correct um, because you have to keep in mind that, like, you can recycle back a lot of your stuff, and if you somehow end up in a grind game with this deck, which I don't see how... Um, you have that second Tractus that you can search off of, say, like a top decked engraver. So having that second Tract, I think, is super, super helpful. And also in a 60-card deck, playing two of means that you have a better chance of, like, actually seeing the card, right? So that's just something to keep in mind. Um, I think that... I, I overall think that the correct Fiendsmith ratio is three engraver, one lorry double Tract for the main. I don't really think you ever really stray much from that. Um, we're also, of course, playing three Shifter. Look, it's a shifter deck. You're playing a 60-card pile. If you don't see shifter and you see the Fiendsmith cards, then you're comboing. If you see shifter even with Fiendsmith cards, then you just play shifter because shifter is the better card in that instance. Um, we're playing one Cobalt because we're playing the Bridge of Salvation. Dakota was on two Planet Pathfinder. Um, this is interesting. So you summon it and you tribute it to add a field spell from deck to hand. So you can summon it, tribute to either add Secret Village, or you can get to the Wedgie, which I thought he was playing three of. He's actually only playing two of it, which is interesting. It's it's not the best thing to top deck into. It's not the best field spell in the world, if I'm being completely honest. Like, it's you, you have to have a monster in hand. It's not choice. Anyway, um, but being able to have a normal summon in this deck, which the Exodia deck really doesn't have right now, because all the Millennium Monsters special summon... 
So having a normal summon, if obviously like we don't see Lava Golem, isn't bad. Um, I just feel like that maybe there's something better out there. Um, and then the three Ash Blossom to go along with our monster lineup. Something I should also mention as well is that Dakota told me he did no testing beforehand whatsoever. So basically he just took a pile of cards, put it together, called it 60 cards, and moved on with his day. So keep that in mind. Also, he was side decking double thrust and only playing one talents. I'm playing three. He was playing one and his reasoning was because if he brings in thrust, then he can thrust into the talents. Which is fine. That's not incorrect to be thinking that way. Um, it's just that I feel like if you're going to go that route, you should commit to it more, right? Like if you're going to do that, max out on thrust, play one talents and play, say only one imperm, play one change of heart, play one regeki, play, you know, two lightning storm, you know, there, there's different things that you can do with that, right? So right now I'm on three talents. He was on two foolish barrel goods. I'm also doing the same, a uh, three onk, one, uh, terraforming three prosperity. We talked about the track one, uh, blaze. One call by, um, D. Fisher is fucking hilarious. Uh, <laughs> I actually had a game I was testing this morning where I, <laughs> I hit the opponent with Shifter and I followed it up with a Prosperity Dig for six and I hit D. Fisher and I didn't have anything else good. So I just took the D. Fisher, played it, and I passed on a big 8,000 attack point truck just driving around the field. Um, and then the two Wedgu and Secret Village, Exodia plus Secret Village is just really toxic and it's really funny. Uh, one bridge of salvation, so you can either foolish barrel goods this uh, if you're not using goods on the uh, rollback. Uh, but you use bridge of salvation to banish it, add a field spell and a crystal beast, so you can get the cobalt and the wedge you. That way, you're guaranteed to have a monster in hand, so that you can go wedge you, place a monster from hand, and then place a millennium from deck. Uh, three imperm, one exod fires of rage, one tikaboo. Um, he didn't play Rivalry. I'm playing Rivalry. I think that's pretty good. One Angel Statue for the Silhouette. One uh, Rivalry that we just mentioned. And then Transaction Rollback. So uh, here's here's what's funny about this. And I didn't realize this until I was looking literally frame by frame in uh, Dakota's feature match in round eight. <laughs> Exod Fires of Rage. Foolish Barrel Goods. Transaction Rollback. You set this off of Exodia. You now have two nukes. That is insane. Ha! <laughs> So, Dakota told me he would like to add a second copy of Fires of Rage. I don't think that that's correct, because this is really a card that you don't want to brick on, right? Like, I would rather see Transaction Rollback in my opening hand than an Exod. You want to be setting it off of the Exodia. Same thing with Blaze. You don't really ever want to open Blaze and Exod. So, being able to go Foolish Burial Goods Rollback, you set up Exodia, set the Fires of Rage, you nuke the opponent's board... Then if the opponent continues to play somehow, then you just go transaction, pay half, use fires of rage, blow away the board. Now you might be saying, well, Avery, you want a lot of life points because you want to be able to gain attack off the Exodia. Why do you care when you're going to TK on the next turn with Exodo Blaze? So at minimum, this will have 10,000 attack. And even if you cut your life points in half, you're not going to be under 1,000. So you're not going to die off the Exodia. Like you're, you're going to be fine. Um, even if like worst case scenario, you pay 2,000, 4,000, 6,000, you're down to 2,000. Then if you use rollback, you're down to 1,000, and then you lose because you have Exodia up. But if that's happening, you're probably not really winning anyway. And you're most likely going to grab, like, Ankh off of, like, the shield or something before you're paying 6,000. So, like, I don't feel like that would ever really come up. If it does, then you just don't do the rollback line. Like, you know, it's it's kind of whatever. Or you just wait until you have to pay a 1000 on your turn. Then on your own turn, you go banish, roll back, choose ex Exod, and then you nuke the board. Then you can go Blaze and just win. Um, so, yeah, that's just something to keep in mind. So, yeah, that that's the main deck. It's hilarious AF. Uh, his side deck was 3 Sphere Mode, 2 Crow, 2 Thrust, 3 Evenly, 2 D-Barrier, and 3 Judgment. Um, I feel like a lot of this he took from the 60 card build from the OCG that we saw a few months back, which it looks very similar to. Um, extra deck, I know that it's 14 cards. The 15th card could be whatever you want, honestly. Uh, I've just been messing around with stuff. It's still in the work in progress phase. You could put in Mascarena. I don't know why you would, but I mean, you can. You could put in Asa, the Earth Charmer, which I don't really think is all that good. Selene, Access Code, whatever, right? You could even put in a third Exodia Incarnate. But we're playing two for now with the Disarray, Lacrima, and the Necroquip because it's good. I threw in Sky Crisis because it's good. M7. So here's the thing with the Fiendsmith engine. You can go uh, Fiendsmith combo, either go Beatrice to dump Rollback or Bridge, 
to get you to the secret village of the Wedgu, or you can go M7 to grab back Engraver. Now you have a monster in hand that you can use off of Wedgu to place into the back row. Then when you bring out, when you use the Onk and everything has to shuffle back, you're shuffling an Engraver back into your deck. So you're not really losing a whole lot of, of advantage. It's really interesting. Because remember, you can't play things like Wave High King Caesar because the Onk is going to shuffle everything back that's not a Millennium Monster or a level 10 Exodia Monster. So if you're making Wave High King, you're just wasting you know your time because... The opponent can still nib you because the Wave High King went back to the extra deck. Um, then we're playing one Little Knight, one Silhouette Rabbit, uh, one Sequence, one Requiem, one Closed Heaven. Uh, and then I'm messing around with Underworld Goddess. You have extra deck space if you're not going to be playing Super Poly Targets, right? So why not, as like a backup plan, use Moon of the Closed Heaven. Use its effect to target one of the opponent's monsters to make Underworld Goddess. Now as long as you can put another body on your field, which you probably can because of the Millennium Monsters... You use two monsters on your side of the field with Closed Sky, then two monsters on the opponent's side, one from the Closed Heaven effect, and then one from Underworld's effect, and then there you go. You just sucked up two of the opponent's monsters, pause, to make uh, Underworld Goddess. So really interesting interaction. This never comes up, obviously, because everyone just uses it for Fiendsmith combos, um, but it's it's something to really keep in mind. So the, like I said, the 15th card in the extra deck could be whatever you want. But let me know what you guys think. Let me know how we could make this better. I, I really like... I honestly kind of want to take this to a regional, as garbage as that sounds. Um, I really like... My goal for this upcoming new ban list, depending on like what gets hit and stuff, because I'm sure Beatrice is going to get banned, and then we're going to have to rework some of this stuff. But my goal is to like get my invite early, so I can play stupid shit like this at regionals and piss people off. <laughs> and like if I end up in like the last round and I'm playing against someone who doesn't have their invite, I'll just give them the win instead of trolling them with this deck, because then that's just more people that have their invite. That's the kind of person I am these days. Like... The more people that have their invite, the better. So, guys, let me know what you think about this. Um, again, shout out to Dakota for just being a Chad <laughs> with this deck. Oh, my God. Guys, thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video.